So a few years ago, we at Stanford were at end contract for our occupational health IT solution, our medical record, and we needed to make a determination on what our path would be moving forward. Essentially, we had had the record since clinic inception, approximately five years before. And at that time, the clinic was, was small. It was a medical surveillance entity um, with one nurse and one physician. And since that time, our, our needs had changed and we had grown in, in dramatic ways. The solution that we had was an old version of the vendor software. It was click intensive, not much was automated, it was difficult to pull reports and ultimately uh, was not meeting the functionality that we needed. But in terms of thinking about who we were going to move forward with and what that process was, we had to first recognize not just whether it's with this vendor or a different vendor that we move forward with them, we had to recognize who we were, where we think we wanted to be, and with whom did we want to advance. And this internal introspection kind of led us to, to think about the fact of, of where we fit in the piece of the atmosphere that was Stanford. And we were at the time, and we still are, a smaller but equal component of a larger health and safety team. And to insert ourselves and be a fully functioning member of this team, we recognized that we needed to collaborate with these groups in, in a far broader way than what we were currently doing. Uh, we had grown as, as a clinic to, uh, with our care encompassing full workers' compensation care, injury treatment and follow-up, uh, medical surveillance for infectious disease and animal care, travel medicine, fitness for duty exams. We had expanded to covering over 20,000 employees and 15 personnel in the clinic, but that was our clinic. And, and how, as a group, could we move forward with health and safety, and how could we leverage this medical record we are looking to get to, to bring us there? So the procurement process, um, we, uh, we were pretty eager in, in, uh, in trying to move ahead with our initiative. And our, our gung-ho operations manager uh, went to our local vice provost and, and basically uh, stated, well, you know, we have an idea. Uh, we need to upgrade our medical record. Uh, we have some good things in mind we want to do for the university. It might cost a little bit more upfront, maybe just a little extra zero on the on the data sheet, but it's okay, we're going to go ahead and do that, I just need your approval, uh, please sign this, thanks. And the, uh, the provost um, nodded in agreement, agreed that as, as a group we could move forward together, uh, but also, also displayed or uh, told us the path that we needed to take to move forward. Uh, and what we needed to understand as part of this procurement process is not just who we were beholden to, but who the provost and, and the groups that are funded for us what do they need to, just, to do to justify this expense? And so he set us on a, on a path um, that ultimately proved uh, very, very helpful in terms of the growth of our clinic. Um, and it uh, led us to consider other ways that we could expand uh, what we were, we were doing as a group. Now, a process that we thought might take three months, maybe six months, turned out to be well over a year even close to two years from inception. And in fact, this wasn't the first time we tried to get a new medical record. Two years before, we had gone through the process and had been turned down. So there was a lot riding on this effort uh, because realistically, if this were not approved, it could be a number of years before we move ahead with another record. And, and really, it would affect not just what we do internally to the clinic, but our role within the university. And we were looking, and we are looking, and continue to look to expand our health and safety role. So as first partnership, we looked internally um, to health and safety, but external to our group and recognized that our, our health and safety team, environmental health and safety, had needs that uh, basically were in concordance with ours. Um, and one of the major deficits that they had was the injury reporting on campus was paper-based. This was uh, essentially when an injury occurs, an employee would fill out a paper form. This would go to the supervisor, and then this would then go to health and safety. For a variety of reasons, there were significant lag times. And even when reports were viewed, it could be two to three months after an injury where some critical um, injuries were actually uh, reviewed for an, or an analyzed, analyzed for cost or even um, for, uh, in terms of uh, prevention. And, and so we recognized that they had a need for an online system that they could access that had incident reporting and tied into our medical record. And, and the reason for this 
is another, another constraint that health and safety had was injury analysis. We were relying on a third party vendor to prepare reports. Uh, these reports are often based on either incorrect or incomplete data. And then it analyzed this data based on questions that weren't even pertinent to us. So we, we wanted to grab, grab this and take hold of this. And our pitch to health and safety was, we can make a whole campus-wide incident report that can be accessible online. We can control the data. We control what comes in. We can control the questions. If it's not doing what we want, we can change the questions. And then we can use this data with our population to do analysis. And analysis in a far better way than the insurance companies could because we actually had better data or would have better data. So that was one internal group, and, and they were very interested in the process. Um, human resources uh, had similar issues. So work status reports, reports that go to the supervisors or to HR when an employee is out of work. The HR representatives spent a lot of time tracking these down, determining up-to-date restrictions on employees, whether they're work-related or not. And at, at Stanford, again, this is largely a paper-based and somewhat email-based system. We offered them, what if you could have um, and this, these are pie in the sky thoughts. We weren't really sure what was out there. But if you could have online access real time to work restrictions for all the employees that you supervise or all the employees that under your purview, and they seem interested. Now for us, this was also of, of high import because HR managed the PeopleSoft and the registry database. Um, and they had control of this. And we needed to be integrated with this database to move, move ahead with the medical record that we had. And so uh, it wasn't pure altruism that we were trying to coordinate with them. But in fact, for, for advancement, we had mutual goals and we could work together for this. Um, one key vital party that we also needed to, to work with was IT. Our health and safety team had IT and that was internal to us. And this IT was responsible for vetting um, anything in the in health and safety that was electronic in any in any way but in essence also um, managed their their own databases which had health and data surveillance information on infectious diseases and animal care and and these things were these were components that we want to bring into our our database and our record itself but most importantly they integrated and they had a history of long integration with university site security internet security office and the privacy office. And in this, in this whole process, the most rate limiting factor in terms of an adoption of a medical record was convincing a university-based IT department involved in handling medical, personal medical information for a, variety, wide, for a wide variety of the campus population, including to some degree undergraduate students, uh, convincing them that the medical record that we wish to choose is compliant with their needs. And that part of the process, that involvement of the security office and, and the privacy office, could be a three to six month vetting process when they're actually involved. But their wait time for a project could be well over a year. So we had to seek them out before we had any idea what medical record we wanted to get them on the list and to schedule a time so that they'd be able to review things. Because there are larger institutional projects, larger hospital interchange projects, um, cybersecurity issues that that are paramount compared to a, a smaller rock health clinic. Um, essentially then, these other groups, um, procurement, general counsel, the C-suite, the, um, the higher level executives, our pitch to them was, was somewhat similar but broader. They're very interested in employee health. There's employee-based wellness programs on campus. And this product that we were trying, this, this goal that we had was to pitch total worker health. Now, in terms of driving and moving this process along, just managing with these disparate groups, um, risk management, IT, uh, health and safety, all, all the groups that are mentioned, just scheduling meeting times and, and setting agendas is, is a significant job on its own, um, let alone trying to bring a group of people who tend to have various interests, who do not want to go to A to B linearly, and instead take a more circuitous route. So what we wanted to do is we is assign a point person who could really manage this process and manage this process firmly and with resolve. And we chose our, our local, our clinical operations manager. And this operations manager, we benefited from the fact that she had private, private practice background, um, significant budget um, 
expertise, including working in a clinic with a constrained budget. And this was very important for the groups that we reported to understand that we were actually budget, budget conscious and really focused on not just the product, but the way and the cost that, that would be necessary to achieve this. And, and we needed someone, and this is, I think, a, a, a really good point about the process, is not who could just handle all that, but who was also a connector. Someone who could take all these disparate groups and these disparate personalities, bring them together with a sense of humor, and move the path forward. And, and I think um, the first time that we went through this process, when we didn't succeed with this, one of our, our mistakes was not choosing the correct point person. And, and so early on in, in the process, thinking about this is really, really important. Now in assembling the team, the team globally refers to the people and all the groups that I represented before, but even internally, who with me and the other clinicians um, and the health and safety team are gonna make this determination? And we realize that we need to have a core group of people who are present on every vendor evaluation and as part of the process, to provide consistency, but also a wide range of data. And this included not just the clinicians or myself, but our medical assistants, uh, industrial hygienists, and other people who we wanted to have a, a role in this medical health care, this medical record initiative moving forward. And I think that had us thinking more, more globally. This, again, is not just about us. It's about our partners and, and how we can, with this record, potentially bring their visions together. So I think you know some of this is just setting up the infrastructure of what um, of how we want to set things up and, and the planning that we needed to do, but th that's totally disregarding what we actually wanted the record itself to do. And and really the first stage of this was developing a list of pain points, and you know in thinking about that, how many how many here are using an occupational health record, electronic health record for medical charting? Um, the number of clinicians here and, and some others. Now of those how many are 100% happy with their medical record? And, and I, no one can say that. Um, but what's your, just name one, what's your highest pinch point? What's your, uh, um, and it doesn't have to be you, but what, what's the biggest barrier that you have with your record? Um, and, and think about this to yourself. Now for me, for us, this was the, the fact that everything was very, very manual. And it's really easy to figure out. You have a paper questionnaire that needs to be scanned in by someone by hand brought into the system, indexed, hopefully we'll be able to be read because of legibility, and then transcribed by a clinician into the note because you're trying to take that information into the note itself. All these steps in the process, um, pretty easy to, to say that we want a process that takes a scanned document and makes this more automated. But, and this is one, one item in, in a wish, wish list. What we did is we took together the wishes of industrial hygiene, of health and safety, various members and um, the fit testers and um, the surveillance folks as well as the people in our clinic from the billing specialists to the admin assistants and what was on this list and this took a long time to prepare now we certainly we used excel spreadsheets there are google shared google documents now you can use trello or slack or these other tools to be more collaborative in in real time with some ease and we created a list of well over 40 categories of places that we wanted to improve and well over a hundred specific line items of either nice to haves, must haves, or pie in the sky type, um, type goals. And, and so then became the fun part of the process. So this, this is very labor intensive, but extremely, extremely important. If you do not define what you need with your record, then when you go through the process, those get lo that gets lost. There's too much going on, and you need to have to be able to develop that checklist and vet that against each of the vendors. Uh, so the fun part was our operations manager and us, we started to benchmark other places, places that we know, who does Berkeley use, who does um, UCLA use, but ultimately even institutions that we had no prior connection with, parallel academic institutions with research and hospital, content, um, I guess, components of, of the medical care that we did, we cold called them. We talked to them about their medical record. We had interview sheets that we set up just so we made sure we talked on specific points. We used the networks that we had, our local ACOM or WOMA or nursing networks. Uh, one of our sites is a Department of Energy research lab, and so we contacted the, all the other Office of Science labs. Had um, Because the Department of Energy has specific requirements that go beyond what the university requires for uh, electronic safety in terms of um, cybersecurity. And we found out what all these sites were using for their medical records. 
Um, and this is fun, this is interactive. We get ourselves out there. Um, it, it's sort of a growth opportunity for the clinic and leaving our, our typical sphere of in, interest. We conducted online research. Uh, searching by Google is actually, can be a pretty effective way to find out record, find records that are there. Records even that nobody is using, new records um, that, are, that are starting to rise up. And then we, can, uh, we could view demos and other things on those vendors' websites. And so we, we contacted the vendors directly, um, explained the process to them, scheduled demos, and essentially um, provided guidance for the presentations. Now, what we did is we took our pain list and the categories on the pain list, and we organized them into essentially a letter that we provided, a single page letter to these vendors. And we said, we want what ultimately turned out from a group of 10 to 15 vendors, the six first round finalist vendors, six of them, we're, we're gonna give you 90 minutes a webinar with our team. These are the, this is what our interests are, um, and please come prepared. And so the vendors, vendors got this list and, and basically what's on there. So things that, that are broad categories, user-friendly and intuitive interface, scheduling, patient portal, work status reporting, scheduling, interfaces with lab, interfaces with outside vendors, interfacing with hardware equipment. Um, simple things, but, but things that we wanted to be addressed. Um, and what we did is we let them run with it. So when we started the call, we let the vendor show us the software on their own with, with very little guidance, at least for the first portion of the call. Maybe they would show us what they did best. Maybe they would show us how easy it is to use. Hopefully they paid attention to this and they were trying to address what our needs were, although that wasn't always the case. And what was really interesting in the process is, even without our prompting, even without our interference, these, these medical record entities, nationally known, well vetted, stumbled. Um, and these experienced um, outreach teams could not um, actually had, with, often we would hear, oh, this doesn't seem to be working today. I'm sorry, this is really slow. This is something new that we just developed. And we'd realize right away without doing anything that some of the problem points that they had with their record. It was totally fascinating. And then on top of that, that gave us a time where we actually wanted to direct them toward what our list was. Um, we could step in and, and throw a little wrench in the issue and see how they they apply. Now we understand people have bad days and, and sometimes presentations don't go as planned. Um, and, and so what we did um, is we allowed them an opportunity to answer questions afterwards um, in, an, in an email that we sent out pretty uniformly to the groups describing things that we felt we might not have been clear on. Now what we did is we took their scorecard, this one page, um, event, this one page list of topics we wanted them to address and we created a scorecard ourselves with high priority items and low priority items and a rating of zero to three with zero meaning no functionality and three being highly impressively functional Generally, two or three meant they could do something pretty, pretty darn well. And we took our team, and our team was consistent from vendor to vendor. And this is important. If, if you're trying to grade something, you want there to be internal consistency. And for us to have different clinicians and different IT people and different health and safety people in for these six vendor meetings would, would throw off sort of the, the base of what we're trying to do. We want there to be a team that, that had this really um, kind of embedded comparison in their mind of what to do. And so they, they graded, and everyone graded separately. And so it was purely objective, I mean, purely uh, numeric. Um, and at the end, we, we compiled these, and we, we saw, was there a difference between these groups? Um, on occasion, the one vendor might have a zero one one category from some people and a three in others. And it could be because we had six vendors coming in, and some people zoned out or weren't paying attention, or maybe they didn't understand what happened. And so. We did have some qualitative discussions about where, where the vendors lay, but ultimately um, we relied on the numeric and if someone disagreed, um, the majority averaged out, but that's kind of where things, things lay. Now that all being said, what, what ultimately happened um, was that 80, it was that one medical record um, was either highly successful or impressively successful in 80 to 100% of the areas on that checklist. Two of the other vendors were in that 60 to 80% range. And these were the three vendors that we moved on to our final stage. Um, it became clear in, in going through the process, even without crunching the numbers, that these three vendors were in the lead. But it still was very, very helpful for us to see objectively what that meant. And this is an example of what a, what a scorecard, um, a comparison scorecard we used. And this is, I, I think, in, in terms of understanding the budget 
um, application, the procurement process, it's very, very important to have a summary document that explains to someone who doesn't really care too much about the issue and doesn't want to delve too deep what the heck you were doing. And in this case, we put all, in this, in this one, five records on one sheet with the categories we were judging them by with relative comments about um, what their strengths and weaknesses were. And, and having these comments is, is, was also helpful because the process was six, nine, 12 months long. And when those vendor demos were two, three months ago, it starts blurring in mind and becomes hard, hard to remember. So taking clear notes afterwards and having these notes put together in this, cat, in this way helped us go back and remember what, what was going on. And now the importance of this, and going back to the importance of this pain list, one of, one of the things on here um, that's there states um, appointment reminder scheduling or appointment reminders. And so we could clearly ask a vendor, does your system have appointment reminders? And across the board, they would say yes. But what was really interesting was if we asked the question in a little more detail, um, what kind of appointment reminders do you provide? Well, we provide appointment reminders for only surveillance cases or only for injury cases um, or only until their due date. We don't provide reminders or after or emails when someone is overdue. When they're overdue, they're off that system and now they're on another system that we don't actually function with. And so, um, and in another case, um, we, uh, if someone missed an appointment, we don't let you know as well. And so understanding that one broad question doesn't get the answer that you want, that you really need to have these detailed questions that, that you hit each record with. Uh, because some of the things, and one of the main things we need to do from a medical surveillance standpoint is bring all the people who overdo, overdo in, miss the loss to follow up on our occupational injuries and make sure that they're emailed to come back. And we want to automate this process so that we can free up our staff to do actually what they're trained for versus these mundane processes. And so we started with six vendors, the top three scores advanced. Um, and at, before we moved into the second phase, we emailed each vendor a list of 40 to 50 technical questions that were put together by the IT group. And the IT group put this together in advance of the security review. So a lot of the same questions that the security office would need to answer, we asked the vendors up front. Um, and, and happy to share this list at, at any point. We additionally asked the groups for a, a, a list of their pricing scheme. And we might have 30 users on the, our medical record for over 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 records. What, would it, what is your pricing scheme per year? What other fees do you include? And we didn't keep this general. We said, you have a maintenance fee. Do you have an upkeep fee? Do you have a cleaning fee? Do you have a hosting fee? Do you have? We just listed off all these fees because we didn't want the process and, and us to be, and us to essentially look, look worse later when at the time after we've gone through this process, procurement states tells us uh, you left out $50,000 worth of annual fees. Um, and, and for one or two of the records, this was actually a, a showstopper as, as well. So for the second round, we scheduled a deeper dive with the groups. This was two hours face-to-face -face or, or webinar, webinar, webinar based. The first 60 minutes, we had our health and safety, our core team who had been there for all six records, ask mundane, routine, and then critical questions um, ad hoc to the, to the group. So we did not tell the vendors what we were gonna ask them for. We wanted them to be able to respond on the fly. Show us how you print this. Show us how you navigate to this. And, and really and hit them um, in a more stressful situation to see if what we observed during the first time would hold during the, the time after that. Following this, these partner groups, these groups that we work to integrate with, which is risk management, HR, um, Epic IT, a bunch of other groups, we brought them, them in and they asked questions that were mundane to them. If we wanted these other groups to be on this record and share it with us, did this record meet those needs as well? And we needed that from a budgetary standpoint, but also from a functional, functional standpoint. And so we had patient portals and supervisor portals displayed, displayed for them. The interesting part of this and having, having a team that you're willing to have a little too many cooks in the pot, or cooks in the kitchen actually, the, uh, you, know, there, you create an opportunity uh, for a lot of disagreement and, and strong personalities to overtake overtake the, uh, the dialogue and push it in a way that me, myself, might not have wanted it to go, or our team would have want, not wanted it to go. But the corollary of that is the Epic IT group, an example. We had them around for the final round, and they were grilling each medical record system about 
what to us, what is crucial integration with what Stanford Hospital does. We use it for, for x-rays, we had used it for billing, um, we order labs and, and we view medical reports. So we needed, we really desired functionality for integration with the Epic system. And what the, what the IT personnel were, were talking, and, and much of it was, was technical speak, but it was pretty apparent to even the non-technical people there that one or maybe even two of the finalists didn't have the expertise to integrate with Epic in a secure way, in a timely way, and, in, and really in any meaningful way that was going to have that team approve this, this record as a vendor. And, and so we were willing to take risks by having these other groups involved because in the end, it led us to less buyer's remorse once we got to the end stage. Um, ultimately, too, another key thing is, is just like uh, when you study for a test that you want to look at old test questions and, and sort of really kind of do something pragmatic and impractical. We contacted end users of all these records and either sat face to face with them or webinared or web chatted or, or talked in detail about their experience, not just with using the record, but with the migration process and, and the whole kind of A to, A to Z um, interchange that they had undergone. And this, this was very, very helpful for us. So from this phase two, we created a scorecard. And, and this is nothing, nothing fancy. This is actually Excel based. Um, and color coded in, in, a, in a weak um, or but functional way, and um, or simple but functional way. And really, what it did, and, and these vendors may or may not have been this may not or may, or, may or may not have been the actual ratings that were given, but we were able to pull out, and this was four or five pages of items like this, every line item of things that we were interested in with each of the three records, and whether or not grossly they met, didn't meet, or might meet those needs. And when we want, and when we want to submit this, and we've submitted this to our, our provost for approval, quickly, again, they can look at this, see a broad category, see a question within it. One, understand that we did two due diligence, but two, be able to just visually see quickly where one record stands out compared to another or another. And, and, and this, this, um, this is highly important, but goes back, and the foundation for this is based on that pain point list that we made for six months with help of all the rest of our staff. And, and so, um, again, the foundation makes this whole process easier, and again, it makes it more consistent to do. So, there we go. So in making the business case, we put together a 25-page report. Um, could have been overkill. That was probably written text and diagrams, plus multiple appendices, which listed all these um, all these uh, reports that I mentioned, the wish list, the scorecards, the cost justification, the vendor analysis, final reports, um, and an executive summary that really brought this down into one page. And now in thinking back to the procurement process, why was this even important? And, and maybe, maybe this was too much, but in perpetuity at Stanford, through two years from now, five years from now, as long as we have this medical record, our vice provost, provost group, Ne might need to defend the choice of this expense down the road to their superiors. And this document, um, which probably no one would read in entirely, entirety, um, would be the, the foundation for that. And, and so um, we want to make sure we were successful and, and in, this, in this case, um, ultimately it was approved. The, uh, this was an internal document we put together just in thinking about how a new record would help us. And we went from a, a record that had a large number of manual processes. Um, and we were trying to automate as much as we can. Um, and so if we had 10 minutes of MA, MA time scanning the document, indexing, and now the new record, if the scanning is automated, becomes two minutes of an MA time, that differential in time we turned into a monetary value um, for the clinicians, for the medical assistants, for the admin assistants. And this was not a pitch we made formally, but internally, um, the number here is about 150,000 per year. Um, the true numbers, depending on the estimates, could easily be a third of that. But essentially what we were recognizing is we're clearing up at least a full MA's salary or time for them to do the work they were trained for and to help the growth of the clinic and the health and safety of the university rather than on tasks that should be done automatically by a computer or a system. Um, and, and this. Um, in itself, this, 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 time, this framework helped us understand that um, the true costs of this system were less than, than what it might be. 
the this was a, a final sheet that we included. This was another four to five to six page document that took all our current pain points in the left column that we developed initially, all the goals that we'd had at the start for what our new record would be, and the right hand column was what the record that we ultimately chose, what functionality would it have, um, and how would it meet or not meet those goals. In large, in large degree, it met the goals that were on there, but essentially someone could take a look at this and understand where we started and where we ended up and feel happy with that process. So ultimately, we notified the selected vendor that they're our choice. We notified the incumbent vendor, the one that we were using, um, that we were moving away. Now this vendor was involved in the process and did not make our final round, so they're aware that we were moving on. Um, but in, in, think, in, in even this step of the process, we wanted five, six years of medical record data to migrate successfully um, and without issue from this record to our new record. And, and we needed their support for this. They could have made it harder. Um, it, it could have been a lot more of a barrier. And in fact, the fact that we kept an open dialogue with them, we were very honest throughout the process, um, and they remained very professional, that this process worked very well and streamlined. One of the other things we did is we ensured that there was significant overlap between the two records. Um, either So we had six months potentially budgeted where we would have two medical records. Um, and Ultimately, we didn't wind up uh, keeping it that long, but for delays, not just in deployment of the new record and a migration from the old record, but in fact, because of delays internal to Stanford with the procurement process and with the IT approvals. And ultimately, um, even when something is close, it can t take a little bit of time in a red tape, in a red tape academic environment. Um, and this allowed us, even at that stage, not to be left um, kind of high and dry from a clinical standpoint. So in, in brief summary, I, in thinking about this process, um, you know, when you make a move to a new medical record, you have to, it, it's a big endeavor. And, and how much of a, of a pain or how much pain points do you have with your current record? Um, that, is that is that enough to prompt you to move on? And for us, this clearly was, and it clearly was for years. And in, in delineating these points and then understanding the steps that we need to go through from a procurement way, management standpoint, from assembling our team, that's a wide range of people, both internally and externally, to weigh in and help with the process. We as a clinic ourselves grew. And it's not, not just grew kind of intellectually or emotionally, or, but we grew from being sort of a, a one-off clinic in a small part of campus in a, as part of a component of maybe um, you know, recognized health and safety to becoming a larger player with risk management with um, HR, with, with all these other disparate groups around campus, um, and in fact now have a much more leverage to push these national or these, these campus-wide initiatives for health and wellness. And part of this process enabled us to make a case for a new medical clinic at a time where even budgets on campus were being constrained. And so in fact, in a couple months, they start breaking ground at a new clinic where we'll have on-site PT, on-site acupuncture, um, larger space and, and education and training. We can bring in some of the wellness teams for nutrition talks. And so this, this discussion on a medical record, which seemed initially to have nothing to do with the rest of our role on campus, ultimately has, has propelled us forward. Um, and, and it's been a really, really positive experience.